don't know why we were I, I just want to tell you thank you God I want to tell you thank you for being the wonderful God that you are I want to tell you thank you God because you look beyond all of our faults and you see our needs and you answer those needs oh God I want to tell you thank you for being the wonderful father the wonderful father that you are I want to tell you, thank you, God, because you just take our hands and you lead us and you guide us. And sometimes, God, we're like those wayward, out of control children. You pull us to the left and we want to go to the right. You're pulling us forward and we want to go back. But God, you are the God who you are. You never let our hands go. You never let us go. You're always there, even when we're wrong. God, you're there. You don't turn your back on us. And God, I just want to say thank you. I want to tell you thank you for every saint over the world, God, that was praying and petitioning and worshiping you. Every saint that lifted up their voice to you. God, thank you for them. Every church door that is open everywhere. God, thank you. Thank you, God, for blessing and for keeping. Oh, God, I'm asking you and I'm begging you, God, I'm asking you to bless that building called the great. Oh, Lord, I ask you to deal with each and every person represented with that building of the grief. Holy Spirit, would you please go there and let your Shekinah glory go from front to back, left to right, up and down in that building called the grief. Oh, God, bless each and every member in that church. Father God, I ask that you bless Reverend Russell in a special way. Bless him as only you can, God. Lord, mm -hmm. you know what he's going through. He never complains. He's always yes. got a smile, always yes. got an encouraging word, always mm -hmm. got something to lift you up, always got something to push you forward, always got a word of wisdom. God bless Reverend Russell. Bless him. him when he needs it. Keep him mm -hmm. going, God. Do as only you can do in him, and that is be his God in his life. In his ministries, in his goings and comings and outreach, keep him, God. He's on the street with the crazy people. Protect him, God. Give him your bulletproof vest. God, cover him as only you can. And, oh, God, I ask that you bless Sister Russell, God, because that's a wife, and she worries about her husband. She worries about her companion. She may not say it. She may not show it, but her heart is there. Lord, keep that family. Each and every family that is going through something this day, God. Oh, God, reach out to them. Go near, go far. God, whatever the situation is, God. Whatever it is, God. Whatever we've been through during the week. God, thank you for delivering us. It's Sunday. We made it through. We had trials and tribulations all week long. Tears and crying. But it's Sunday. God, we made it through. We can lift you up. Oh, God, we ask that you continue to bless. We ask that you continue to keep. We ask that you continue to be that mighty God that you have been since the beginning of time. Be the God that we need in our life. God, we honor you. We tell you thank you. I ask that you bless my partner. I don't know where she is today, but oh, God, bless her, strengthen her. j blessings all in her life. God, do what needs to be done. We ask that you continue to bless. Lord, look on my family in the name of Jesus. I don't have to call a name. God, you know what we stand in need of. You know what's going on. But oh, God, would you bless. And Sister Margaret just jumped in my face. Oh, God, bless her. Keep her. Give her those good days. Day after day after day after day. She's a struggle, God. She struggles. But bless her, God, as only you can. Mother Brown, God, bless her. Touch those knees. Let the swelling in the feet come down. Oh, God, keep her as only you can. You kept her this long, 97 years. God, keep her. Oh, God, we ask these blessings. But most of all, God, we ask that you shower us, rain on us, God. Rain on us with more love. Rain on us with more of you. Rain on us with you, God. Rain on us with that Shekinah glory. And oh God, when you do these things, everything is going to be all right. Yes. So we honor you today, God. 
We ask that you look on Deacon Bell's eyes, God. Touch them. Whatever is going on, God, you gave them to her. You fix them. Whatever it is, God, you fix it. We tell you thank you. We honor you. We adore you. We love you. We magnify you. We exalt you. We praise you. We worship you. We give you glory. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so very much. Thank you so much. I'm going to turn it over to the hands of our music ministry at this time. Um, if there's any issues, you'll let me know, correct? Brother White, I'll turn it over to uh, music ministry. Hello? Can you hear yes, me? Sir. Hello? yes, sir. We can. Yeah, you're fine. Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. I'm near. Ten Father, mercy and grace, thou art welcome in this place, Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Amen. Potent Father. presence there is healing divine no other power can save Lord but thine Holy Spirit thou art welcome in Place, oh, thou art well. Come in this place, fill all the hungry and empty within. Store us, oh, Father, revive.
his place in this place To this place you are well if you didn't know that you were welcome you're welcome now we're gonna have our announcements and communications we had sister Shade slated for it but i know she's not with us today and so i'm going to turn it over into the hands of our very own chairperson of the diaconate the deacon uh onitha bell good morning legree and visiting family good morning good morning. good morning we give honor to our lord and savior jesus christ and to all of our visitors and to all of our, the family of Legree, we welcome you here to the service today. We pray that you enjoy yourself as God's word being preached in every song that goes out. We pray that it be lifted up, that you will return again in the future, not only return, but bring a friend with you. So we thank you for coming today. Now I want to make some an announcement. I want to announce that, um, our church will be giving an outing in October where we are going to Sight and Sound. And sponsoring this trip will be Sister Shade Williams and Sister Hayesha Stevens and Sister Wanda Johnson. Everyone is invited. If you're inter interested in going, please contact Sister Shade Williams or Sister Aisha Stevens or Sister Wanda Johnson for further information that you want. If you want a ticket, please contact them right away if you want to get on board and go with them on this trip. Now, on every Tuesday, but we are closed right now for the summer, we have a Bible class from 10 to 11. Everyone is invited. Believe me, if you come to this Bible class, and listen to the word of God being discussed and join right in, you will have a good time and you will return. Our class is from 10 to 11. So please feel free to come, but the class start again the second Tuesday after Labor Day. On Thursday, we have our Our Power Press service going on. Everyone is invited to our, our press service. You could come and you're welcome and there will be prayers going up for everyone. And all you have to do, just step right in and just say a prayer because you know, God hears our prayer. So we want you to enjoy coming to be with us. And when our church open, we invite you to come into our church and we pray and trust in God that it will be opening soon. So you can come and witness in our church on Sunday and on our Bible class on Tuesday and on our prayer service on Thursday. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, Deacon Bell. We appreciate that. I wanted to share a couple other things with you as well. The um, uh, I wanted to share with you that on next Tuesday, not this Tuesday, next Tuesday, I will be preaching at the Bronx Ministers Evening Conference of uh, of, 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 of a New York and by Sanity. We meet every Tuesday evening at 7.30 at Mount Bethel Baptist Church. That's host pastor, Reverend Dr. Gloria Bradshaw, who preached for us last week at our anniversary. Church is located at 698 Cortland Avenue, right here in the Bronx. So please, ma'am, please, sir, I'd love to see you there. This is an in-person, there are no virtualities in this one. You have to be there. So it's next 
Tuesday the 26th of July. The time is 7.30 p.m. at the Mount Bethel Baptist Church, 698 Cortland Avenue in the Bronx, New York. Okay, so if you need any additional information, we have one more Sunday to go before that. But this is the last meeting before we break uh, as, as, a, as a conference for the summer. So I've got the last date. So please come out and support. I love to see the degree uh, uh, in the congregation on that day, on that evening. That would be great. And also, just a reminder, this is all fun. On September 17th of this year, uh, Goodwill Baptist Church is sponsoring a trip to uh, the Meadowlands to see the historically Black colleges and universities football game, the classic uh, this year. Uh, is it Howard University is going to be playing uh, Morehouse University. Now, if you don't like football, that's okay. But if you like marching bands, you got to show up because it's awesome. Oh, yeah. And not yeah. only that, but we'll, we'll, this in, uh, includes tailgating, which means you'll be doing a lot of eating. And there are a lot of vendors there. So there's a lot of shopping that take, can take place. So the buses leave Goodwill at 8 a.m. Ticket cost is $100. Please, ma'am, please, sir, if you're interested, please let me know right away because the buses are filling up quickly. Uh, if we get enough people from here, maybe we get our own bus to go. But please, ma'am, please, sir, if you're expecting to drive, parking at the stadium is 40 bucks and tickets are 80. So it's going to cost you 120. If you go on the bus, it costs you 100. So think about it. Please come. Please join. This is just fun. This is pure fellowship and fun and since we've not fellowship with goodwill before this will be a great opportunity to actually create and establish a fellowship with my home church which is of course goodwill baptist church god bless you thank you so much and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn it right now over into the hands of our trustee ministry who will now lead us in our giving period trustee lorraine williams She's not there. Oh, she's not there, so I'll turn it over to you, and then you can lead, guide, and direct as you see fit, um, mm -hmm. Trustee Deacon Dorothy Williams. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, <clears throat> we come to the time for our offering, and it's a blessing to be able to give back to God a portion of what he has loaned to us. He's been good to us, so this is our time to give back to him. Uh, you can give your offerings and tithes and donations by going online to give a fund under the names of Legree Baptist Church, 844 St. Anne's Avenue, Bronx, New York, 10456. Or you can mail it to Legree Baptist Church, Post Office Box 2482, New York, New York, 10027. Again, Giveify, LaGree Baptist Church, 844 St. Anne's Avenue, Bronx, New York, 10456. Or mail it to LaGree Baptist Church, Post Office Box 2482, New York, New York, 10027. And we will have a little giving music now and the prayer later. Where is he? I, I, I'll get it. I want to buy it.
Lord, I need just a little more grace to see me through. Father God, we thank you for this day, Father. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to come again and share back with you what you have given us. We ask your blessings upon the offering, Father. Bless those that gave, those that desire to give, and those that didn't have. May you bless them in the future that they may be able to participate. These and all of the blessings we ask in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much. Turn over to the hands of our, uh, to our ministry, and they will lead us accordingly. Our music ministry. Oh. Let your glory fill this place. Let your all-consuming fire fill this tabernacle and purify our hearts. Surround us in this place. Breathe new life within us. Send a refreshing love. Saturate our hearts. Let your glory fill this way. Let your arm consume. Fill this tabernacle, purify us, surround us in this place, and breathe new life within us, send a refreshing love and saturate us. Breathe on us. Shower 
shower down, shower down, send your spirit, Lord, rain on us, breathe on us, shower down, shower down. Spirit, Lord, let your glory fill this place. Let your all consuming fire fill this tabernacle, purify our hearts. Oh. Surround us in this place. Renew our within us. Send a refreshing Lord. Saturate us. Rain on us. Breathe on us. Shower down, send your spirit, Lord, yeah. rain on us, oh, 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 breathe on us, shower down, shower down, send your spirit, Lord. Let your glory fill this place. Let your own consuming fire fill this tabernacle. Purify our oh. Surround us in this place. Breathe new life. Within us, send a refreshing Lord, purify your great holiness, breathe on us, shower down. Breathe on us, shower down. Let your grace, your mercy, your love just fall fresh on us. Thank you, choir. Thank you so much. Our music ministry just goes above and beyond. They really do. Uh, and I'm grateful for them. Now we'll have our sick shut-in and bereavement report. I don't know who's gonna do that. I don't think um, 
Mariah is here today, so. Um, I got it. Okay, Deacon okay. Bell again. Come on, Deacon Bell. We pitch hitting. Okay. She's hitting, hitting on in multiple places today. Okay, our sick list for today: Sister Marie Gregory, Sister Bertha Williams, Sister Irene King, Sister Rosalie Presley. Even though you see her on the line, but she make her way to the line. Sister Deaconess Ronnie Felder. And even though you see Sister Diane Bryan on the line, she's still sick of going through things. Sister Essie Williams and Sister Johnson, you see her on the line, but she's having a little sickness going in her body too. Our mother of the church is Annabelle Brown and Sister Mary Primans. Now we also, you see it's Minister Oliver on the line, but her family, we ask in prayer for the Oliver family, her daughter and her grandson, and her three, her three brothers. So let us keep them in prayers, okay? Now, I'm going on to um, Sister Greyhouse family. Even though Sister Greyhouse is on the line, please pray for that family. She had two brothers that's sick and her grandson. So I ask, and also for her, she don't complain, but I know what's going on. So don't be surprised when I call out your name and you haven't spoken to me. But if the spirit tell me there's things going on, I will call your name out, all right? Now my cousin, his name is Teddy Dolger. He had a heart attack yesterday. So let us pray for him and my brother, Morris Lee Giles, that live in Texas. He's not well. So we, I asked you all to pray for them. And maybe there's many other on the line that the spirit have not told me about. But all of those, we pray that God be with you and that God will continue healing your body and keep the faith and look to God because know that he is a healer. Amen. Thank you so much. I want to add to that list just to ask you to pray in bereavement for the Paris family. Uh, my friend um, Robert, who went home to be with the Lord earlier in the month. Also, the Wilson family, uh, another family whom I grew up with, another Another one taken from time to eternity. Keep the Wilson family in prayer, as well as the Moss family. Uh, they lost one of the matriarchs of their family in their homegoing services on this coming Monday. So please keep them in your prayers as well. Now, there may be others who, who need prayer that's not on our list, whose name was not called, but you know who you are. But if there's someone that is crossing your mind that you want to um, have us pray for, please let us know. Now you can unmute yourself and just call out their name. Uh, we will be glad Hi. to do that. Hi, this is Sister Sims. Can you keep my son, grandson, and my daughter-in-law in your prayers? They're in Texas, and since they've been there, they've been getting real sick. Yes, we will do that. Sims family, for sure. And also, please keep the Utley family um, in your deepest prayer, Mother Utley, she's the mother of the church, Living Rock Christian Center, where my daughter belongs to. They found her dead in her apartment. She had been dead, been there for about for a couple of days. And it's a shock. It's rocking us, you know, Mother Utley. She's that, she's that little feisty mother of the church that said, Where your gloves at? You know you can't work with no gloves on. She stayed on top of everything, but she loves the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's going on to be with the Lord, Mother Utley. Keep the family in prayer. Mother Utley done made it. Now let's pray with the family. Amen. And you know, while we're going through, while we're making it through, while we're struggling through, somebody has come through. And so we always, before we do our prayer, we always offer the opportunity for someone, anyone, whosoever will, to share their testimony of how the Lord has brought them through. You know, there's so much encouragement that people get because of your experience. So don't be shy, but talk about it. If, you're, if, you're, if you don't wanna confess the Lord before people, the Bible declares that he will not confess you before his father. And so I'm asking if there's anyone here today that wants to talk about the deliverance that they've experienced, would you now come the whosoever will testimony period. Morning. Good morning. Mr. Lancaster. Um, as you know, my son Michael has been going through uh, his trials with his cancer. Physically, he's doing very, very well. Very, very well. But emotionally, he's been having a tough time. 
uh, he just decided against my better judgment as a nurse, but he did it anyway, that he wanted to take the booster shot for the COVID-19 uh, vaccine. And when he took it, he developed the side effects, the general side effects, which he got a little bit scared because he thought he was going to go back into the hospital. But I knew as a nurse, this is the side effects of the medication. Even though he felt bad, he was miserable, miserable. I brought him through. He was up walking and did his own breakfast this morning. He back on his feet. This tells me that his body is responding to the transplant the way it should. If he can mount this kind of defense, then he's on his way to recovery. And I thank God for that. I thank him. Thank you all Amen. for your prayers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Woo! That thank truly you. is a testimony. We've been, we've been going through this with Michael for the last couple of years. Isn't that encouraging to know Two years, the Lord? Two years. The Lord the God Lord hears and answers prayer. It may not come when you want it, mm -hmm. but his word will not tarry. He will he be on time. He yes. will be on time. Our morning prayer will be brought to us this morning by trustee Andrew Stevens. Morning church. Good morning. You know, there's a lot of tragedies, sickness going on in the world today. But we know that God is in charge. Trust and believe that he holds us in his hands. Mm, let us bow our heads in prayer. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus. We come to you humbly, oh Father God, thanking and praising your holy and righteous name, oh Father God. We lift you up and we magnify you. We glorify your name, oh Father God. We give you the highest praise, oh Father God. Hallelujah to the name, oh Father God. Father God, we just thank you, thank you, thank you for our lying down last night and our early rising this morning, oh Father God. We thank you for a small portion of our, our minds, oh, Father God, the activities of our limbs, oh, Father God. We just say thank you, oh, Father God. Father God, we ask the forgiveness of our sins, oh, Father God, seen and unforeseen, oh, Father God. Father God, we come to you right now as the petitioner, oh, Father God, standing in the gap, oh, Father God, for those families that are in need, oh, Father God, those families that are going through, oh, Father God, with sickness, oh, Father God, with death, oh, Father God, bereaved family, oh, Father God, myself included, oh, Father God. Father God, we ask that you hold us up on every leaning side, oh, Father God. Father God, put your loving arms around us, oh, Father God. Comfort, oh, Father God. Heal and deliver, oh, Father God, as you only can do, oh, Father God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We just ask that you just hold them up, oh, Father God. Father God, you know everybody. The names were called, oh, Father God. And my memory is not that good. So, Father God, forgive me if I don't call no names, oh, Father God. But you know the ones that are standing in the need, oh, Father God. And I'm the one that's standing in the gap, oh, Father God. Just asking you to comfort, heal, and deliver, oh, Father God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Father God, you said if we have not, because we ask not, oh, Father God. And we ask in the precious name of Jesus, oh, Father God, that you just comfort, oh, Father God. Father God, you said it's darkest in the night, oh, Father God, but joy comes in the morning, oh, Father God. We just have to hold on and depend on you, oh, Father God. All we need to do is depend on you, oh, Father God. Hmm. Father God, you're the doctor in the sick room, the lawyer in the courtroom, oh, Father God, the psychologist for the, for the weary, oh, Father God. Father God, you're our all in all, oh, Father God. We trust, we lean and depend on you, oh, Father God, in all that we do, oh, Father God. Father God, you are our... Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we depend on you. We praise you, we love you, we lift you up, we magnify your name, oh Father God. And this is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Let our hearts say amen, 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 amen and amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Our sermonic selection will be brought to us this morning by our very own sister, Beverly Wright. The next voice that you Amen. Will... Amen. Thank... Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, we can. You ready? Yes, ma'am, we are. Hear me? Okay. How I got over. How I got over. You must all look back and wonder how I got over. Tell me how I got over. How I got over. You know, my soul look back and wonder how I got over. Well, you know, soon as I see Jesus. You know the man that set me free, the man who bled and he suffered, he died for you and for me. I want to thank God because he brought me, I want to thank God because he taught me, I want to thank him for how he kept me, I want to thank him because he never left me, Lord I want to shout Hallelujah, I want to sing about troubles over. My soul look back and wonder how I got over. Tell me how I got over. How I got over. My soul look back and wonder how I got over. Yes. I'm going to wear a giant in that new Jerusalem. I'm going to walk the streets of gold in the holy land of the soul. I'm going to view the host in white. I'm going to travel both day and night. Coming on up from every nation. I'm on my way to the great coronation. Coming from the north, south, east, and west. I'm on my way to the land of rest. I'm going to join God's heavenly choir. I'm going to sing till I never get tired. Lord, I'm going to sing hallelujah. Lord, I'm going to sing about Trouble's over. My soul look back and wonder how I got over. Church, I made it over. I made it over. I made it over. I made it over. Sometime I cry, but I made it. Down on my knees, I made it. Friends talked about me, Lord, but I made it. You know, my soul look back and wonder. My soul look back and wonder. My soul look back and wonder how I got over. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Sister Wright. I appreciate that. Um, okay. Before I preach, I want to I want to share with you, which I've been sharing for the last couple of months, the Apostles Creed. And I want to share this because I really like to emphasize what we believe and why we believe it. I believe in the God, the Father Almighty, maker of yeah. heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father. From there, he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. It's always important that we know what we believe and why we believe what we believe. And having said that, I want to share with you for a brief, for a few moments, the scripture that was read in your hearing already this morning. 
But I first want to bring you greetings from the Goodwill Baptist Church, my pastor's Reverend Dr. Booker T. Sears Jr., the Greater Universal Baptist Church, where I believe they have selected their now new pastor. I don't know exactly who it is, but I'm praying with them and praise God for them. Um, but we're still praying with them. And certainly to Pastor Daniel Dupree, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but he had a bicycle accident and wound up having surgery on both of his arms. And he has been immobilized for about a week or two now. But please keep him in your prayers. Thank God it wasn't any more serious than it was. Uh, he did flip over. They did airlift him to the hospital when he had the accident, but he did not have the kinds of injuries that they thought he might. Thank God for that. For my wife, Evelyn, um, praise God and thank you for praying for her. Minister Oliver, I really appreciate that. To all of our invited guests who thought it not robbery to be with us today. To the Matters of Faith family, those who uh, read the article, I hope you read it today because that's what I'm going to preach about. Uh, and those who follow me on Facebook as I do the Matters of Faith, the radio show live. To the Evangelical Church of God, I thank you for praying for them because what they're going through over at the Evangelical Church of God where they've had four break-ins. This is not isolated and it wasn't targeted specifically to them. Any opportunity that Satan sees where he can stick his foot in, he's gonna do that. So please thank you for continuously praying for them even as we pray for ourselves because Satan is on the loose and he's trying to capture our souls. And so the more we pray, the stronger we become. The more we pray together as a family, the better we become. And if anybody wants to make a contribution to the replacement of the equipment that was stolen, you may do so. And you can do that by sending your money through their cash app. That's the dollar sign E-C-O-G-B-X. That's E-C, Evangelical C, Church O of G, God, B-X, like Bronx. And you can send any amount that you want. And we thank you for that. And of course, to you, to you and especially you, I greet you all in the marvelous and master's name of Jesus, who is the Christ, the mighty God that we serve. No matter what our problems, God already knows about them. He's already solved them. Even though um, we may not see it right now, God does not tarry. His blessings come when he says that they should be there. So he may not come when we want him, but I guarantee you, he's always on time. Okay. And now I wanna read the scriptures for you that were read in your hearing this morning. And I promise you this, I'm not going to be long, but I will be strong. So if you wanna take notes, be a good idea because I wanna make sure that I go through this and make sure I'm strong in my preaching so that the people are edified, God is glorified and Satan is terrified. From the book of Proverbs chapter 22 or 15, verse 22 from the NIV New International Version, plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. Proverbs 11, 14 from NIV. For lack of guidance, a nation falls, but victory is won through many advisors. In 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 6, and then verse 8 from the New King James Version. Then King Solomon consulted the elders who stood before his father, Solomon, while he still lived. And he said, how do you advise me to answer these people? Verse 8. But he rejected the advice which the elders had given him and consulted with the young men who had grown up with him, who stood before him. And what I want to talk to you about today, collaboration makes the dream work. Collaboration makes the dream work. Pray with me for a moment. Father, we thank you for all that our ears have heard, what our eyes have seen, but most of all, what our hearts have felt. But now, Lord, we really do need to hear from you. So I'm praying, Lord, that you'll now speak to me, speak through me, and speak for me so that you will not speak against me on that great getting up morning. And oh, Father, even as the sugar hides itself in the tea, I pray that you'll allow me to hide myself in thee so that these, your people, will see all of thee and none of me. And as thou hast blessed the loaves and the fish, oh God, I pray that you'll bless this sermon that you've placed on my dish. All of these blessings in the name of Christ we pray, amen. Collaboration makes the dream work. We've all heard the expression teamwork makes the dream work. But have we considered that working together requires collaboration? I didn't say cooperation, I said collaboration. To coordinate or cooperate 
means to join, to assist, a joint effort. Whereas collaboration means partnership, teamwork, working together or in concert with each other. Both cooperation and collaboration bring people together for a common thing and are often used interchangeably. But there are subtle differences between cooperation and collaboration. Cooperation usually brings people together for a single purpose, but that purpose is determined by a single person or a group of people. Whereas collaboration is a mutual agreement made by different parties to combine their thoughts, their ideas, and their efforts toward the accomplishment of a goal that has been mutually determined. Don't, don't miss this, that the collaboration is an agreement that are made between people, their thoughts, ideas, and efforts, and they're going to work together to accomplish a goal that they have mutually determined. Let me give you an example using instruments in an orchestra. So Brother White, y'all listen, music ministry. They are doing more than cooperating with each other. They are in collaboration. You, you, you heard Brother Holder and Brother White as they played their instruments. They, they determined in advance the harmony they needed to produce. And, and, and although their instruments play different parts, each individual instrument collaborates in partnership with each other to achieve the intended outcome. That, that there may be some solo parts, but they too have agreed to do it in partnership with the other instruments. In collaborations, there are no big eyes and little use, there's just us. I did say that cooperation and collaboration are often used interchangeably, didn't I? Well, stay with me. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going somewhere, I'm going somewhere. When, when, when the writer of Proverbs 15, 22 and 11, 14 penned these words, I, I, I believe that they had in mind and wanted to encourage people to seek guidance at the beginning of a project so they could get advisors who would come along beside them, not to say yes to all their ideas, but to provide a different perspective based on their knowledge, their skills, and their abilities. People who would help them make the right decision. I call those people collaborators. Those who are willing to combine their thoughts, their ideas, and their efforts to accomplish a goal that they have mutually determined. They're not seeking just one collaborator, but many. The scripture says plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. And then it says, for lack of guidance, a nation falls, but victory is won through many advisors. Notice how the scripture indicates that the planner willingly seeks the counsel of others, not unwillingly, not by grudgingly. They do it willingly. They're looking for people to help them. Many advisors or collaborators can help accomplish every plan or goal if their recommendations are accepted. A lot of times people give their recommendations and they, they give their, their suggestions, but they are not taken because they're not in collaboration. They want people to cooperate with them. In other words, you go along with what I say, because I know what I'm talking about. Collaboration happens when people are willing to put aside their own personal desires for the benefit of the plan, the goal, or the group. Collaboration is an agreement that people come to. Hmm. Santi Diva, an ancient wise man, said, I will cease to live as self and will take as myself my fellow creatures. Did you hear that? I will cease to live as self. I will cease to live for myself and will take as myself my fellow creatures. In other words, I'm going to honor others better than I esteem myself. The Bible says the same thing. He understood the essence of collaboration. You cannot truly work in partnership with others unless and until you are willing to be selfless and abound in compassion. Anyone can take it for a while. You can fake it for a while. But without authentic collaboration and short order, the real character will emerge. Yeah, yeah, you, you can fake it for a while. 
but you can't fake it forever. You can fool some of the people some of the time, and you can fool all of the people every now and then, but you can never fool God. God knows who you are. He knows your heart. So, so watch this, y'all. I want you to, this is where the essence of what I want to talk to you about comes from. In the book of 1 Kings, we see an event in the life of King Rehoboam. After the death of King Solomon, his son, Rehoboam, took over the reign as king. The leaders of the northern tribe asked that Jeroboam, the man who actually led a rebellion against King Solomon, go to Rehoboam and ask that he lowered their taxes. L listen to the words of Rehoboam when they came to him and asked him to reduce the taxes. He says, your father, this is what, this is what Jeroboam told Rehoboam, your father made our yoke heavy. Now, therefore, lighten the burdensome service of your father and his heavy yoke, which he put on us. Now, watch this. And we will serve you. He came with a statement of collaboration. He says, if you can remove this heavy yoke, if you can lighten the burdensome service that your father put on us, the heavy yoke that he put around our necks, we will serve you. Rehoboam told them to come back after three yeah. days for an answer. After three days, come back and I'll tell you what I will do. Verse six says, then King Rehoboam consulted the elders who stood before his father Solomon while he still lived. And he said, how do you advise me to answer these people? He went for collaboration. I didn't read it in the scripture text, but verse seven tells us the advice the elders gave Rehoboam. This is what they said. If you will be a servant to these people today and serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, then they will be your servants forever. Yeah, yeah. If you will be a servant to these people today, and serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, they will be your servants forever. See, 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 these elders understood that when you take you out of the equation, when you take I out of the equation and you just put us in there, then we will be able to live together harmoniously and these people will serve you as the king forever. Verse 8 says, but he rejected the advice which the elders had given him and consulted the young men who had grown up with him and who stood before him. Then it goes on in verse 13. Then the king answered the people roughly and rejected the advice which the elders had given him. Verse 14 says, and he spoke to them according to the advice of the young men. And here's what he said. My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. I want that to sink in for a moment. He got two pieces of advice. One was in collaboration. The other in coordination. I, I can't help but to believe that those younger, those younger advisors trying to position themselves in the kingdom of Rehoboam so that they could get positions of power. They were not thinking about the, the whole nation. They were only thinking about themselves. Just because you get good advice and consult with the right people and Rehoboam consulted with the right people, not everyone takes that advice. Rehoboam not only rejected the collaborative advice of the elders, but he went to his cohorts who grew up with him. Now, let me, let me be careful now. When we seek counsel, we have an example in Rehoboam of what not to do. Or well, you may not know exactly what you're looking for, but you can tell what you should not do. You should not follow Rehoboam's example. He had a group of elders who were in collaboration with him and advised that he would treat the northern tribe with compassion so that they would be loyal to him. The other advisors 
cooperators recommended that he increase their taxes as well as the burden King Solomon had placed on them. Stay with me now. This is not a condemnation of the young generation. No, no, no. This is not what all the younger generation does. This group just made some foolish recommendations that Rehoboam accepted. His decision to take their advice caused an invasion by Egypt and a permanent split between the northern and the southern kingdoms. Sometimes you need to take the advice of people who are in collaboration. All the time you need to take the advice of people who are in collaboration and not just in cooperation because some of them might be saying, yes, yes, collaboration can be as simple as going along to get along. See, cooperation, going along to get along. But collaboration creates a space where Ideas are freely given, enthusiasm is shared, and resources are dispersed without regard to reciprocity. They're not looking for anything in return. They're giving it because they have it to give, and they want to be in collaboration with each other. They want to be wrapped up and joined together like you do in a marriage where three are bound up. It's hard to break. We must find ways to be collaborative while in the planning stages, if we are to make the dream work. I told you, I'm not going to be long with this, y'all. I'm telling you, I'm coming to my conclusion. Rehoboam could have asked a few questions of both the elders and the young group to see if they were either cooperators or collaborators. Hear me now. Does this plan call for a short-term sacrifice for a long-term benefit? Will this plan benefit others? Is this counsel peace loving? And does this advice appeal to my pride or to my generosity? Let me let me, let me say those again because you, you need to write these down. These are really, these are good, this is good stuff. This Charles Stanley kind of good stuff. Does this plan call for a short-term sacrifice for a long-term benefit? Will this plan benefit others? Is this counsel peace-loving? And does this advice appeal to my pride or to my generosity? These are questions we should all ask when seeking counsel to determine if we are getting advice from a cooperator or a collaborator. Consider what it takes for you to move from simply cooperating to collaborating. Wise counsel will tell you that every saint has a past, but every sinner has a future. Wise counsel will tell you that salvation begins the moment you confess your sins. Wise counsel will tell you that the confession is not to another human being, but to God himself through our Lord Jesus Christ. Wise counsel will tell you that no sin is too big and no sin is too small to be forgiven. Wise counsel will tell you that God can do it. Won't he do it? Won't God do it? Wise counsel will prepare you for whatever is to come. Wise counsel will not let you fall. It will keep you from falling and present you perfect, without blemish, without blame to the presence of our almighty God. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all of our iniquities, from all of our unrighteousness. Why? Because Wise counsel, collaboration, we're not only in collaboration with one another, we're in collaboration with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes and envelops us, it includes us, it, it, it just wraps himself around us, and we are inseparable from him. And so when God looks at us, he sees his son. Wise counsel introduces you to Adonai, my great God, El Elyon, the most high God, Elohim, the all-powerful one, El Olam, the everlasting one, El Shaddai, the God almighty, El Roi, God who sees Jehovah, the great I am, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, Jehovah M. Kadesh, the Lord who sanctifies, Jehovah Nissi, my banner, Jehovah Rapha, my healer, Jehovah Roha, my shepherd, Jehovah Sabot, the Lord of hosts, Jehovah Shalom, who brings me my peace, Jehovah Shama, who is my companion, Jehovah Sadid Kanu, the righteous God, Jah, the self-existent one, Yahweh, I am that I am, the great 
I am, Yeshua, Yamashiach, Jesus, who is the Christ. Is there anyone here who needs the mind of Christ and the wisdom he brings? Is there anybody here who wants to give their life to Christ right here and right now? Then come to Jesus just as you are, weary, worn, and sad. And I promise in him you'll find that resting place and he will make you glad. Come to Jesus. He stands at the door and knocks. He said, if any man hears my voice, opens the door, I will come in and sup with them. Wise counsel will tell you that you need to have Jesus in your life because without Jesus, you will not see the Father. Jesus told us, he said, unless you come to me, no man gets to the Father unless they come through the Son. The door of the church stands open. If there's anyone here today who needs the mind of Christ and the wisdom that only he can bring. If there's anybody here who wants to give their life to Christ right here and right now, the door of the church is open. You can unmute yourself and say, it's me. I've been waiting long enough. The wait is over. I want to be in the presence of God. I want him to envelop me. I want to be able to be one of those who can take wise counsel and receive Christ as my savior. Is there anyone here today who wants to give their life to the Lord? Is there anyone here today that's straight away, but it's time to come back? Then come on your Christian experience. Is there anyone here today who has left the fold? Oh, you just got rebellion. You just stopped trusting. Well, come. Maybe you moved from another place. You, you were at another space, but you came back and now you need to reunite with a church where you can carry out the covenant that you made with him. Come on your Christian experience. Or maybe you've never confessed Christ as your savior. You don't know who he really is. You've been in church, but the church has never been in you. You've never gone under the water to identify with Christ's life, his death, burial, and resurrection. Then you should come as a candidate for baptism that the Lord can take you up Create within you a clean heart and renew a right spirit within you. Don't wait, for tomorrow is not yet promised. Some say, I'll do it tomorrow. But tomorrow very well might be too late. If the virus, coronavirus, if these last two to three years have taught us anything, is that tomorrow is not promised to anyone. Come to Jesus. Do it today just as you are. You can't clean yourself up, but you come, get in the boat. Jesus will clean you up. We'll help you to grow to your full Christian maturity by teaching you the word of God and that he loves you unconditionally and there's absolutely nothing that you can do about it. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Be in collaboration with the Holy Spirit. Don't just cooperate with him. Be in collaboration with him. Let him in. He says, I stand at the door. And knock. If any man hears my voice, any woman, any boy, any girl, I will come in and sup with them and they with me. I'll fill their hearts with love. I'll write their names above. That's a conversation that you need to have with Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Lord, do for me what only you can do. Bless as only you can. Pray with me for a moment. Father, for my sins, for my transgressions, for all of the things that I've done that were not in collaboration with your spirit, please forgive me. Father, create in me a clean heart. I know that you lived and that you died but I also know that you got up from the grave with all power in your hand. You ascended to the Father in heaven and you sit at his right hand. From there, you make intercession for me. For me, you call me by name. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and you believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead, you shall be saved. In the moment that you confess and believe, you're saved. 
Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you for writing my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. If you pray that prayer, we don't only believe, we know that you're saved. But you need to connect with the house of worship where you can learn the word of God. When Jesus sent the disciples out, he said, go ye into all the world, teaching them whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. Teaching them. Teaching them. You need to go where you can learn. Be where your spirit can be enlightened and then enriched. See, you come into the light, but then you be enriched. And when you're enriched, you become different. Never to be the same. Put eggs in a cake batter. You can never take the eggs out. It's been enriched. When the word of God gets into your spirit, you're enriched. You become a part of the light. And wherever you go, you let your light so shine that men, women, boys, and girls will see the light of glory, the light of Christ in you. And they too will ask, what must I do to be saved? We're saved so that we can help others to be saved. Amen. As the instrument plays, we invite you. The door of the church is open and it never closes. There's only one door. Jesus said, I am the way, truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father except by me. So you can. You got to come for yourself. You got to come for yourself. Because I believe that it will come to pass. I believe that it will come to pass. I just got a deeper level of spiritual enrichment a deeper level praise the lord a deeper level of enrichment thank you pastor beautiful yes. it shall come to pass yes Reverend. beautiful thank you yes, so Reverend. much thank that you Reverend. some encouragement and enrichment it, yes yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a deeper level of enrichment mm. thank you Reverend Russell. Boy, that's something to chew on today. Mm. By the way, you guys should know, we record these. So if there's a message that you want to hear again, we have these recorded. And we can send you the link. Just request it. I'm requesting it. I, I want to listen again. A deeper level. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Collaboration. Thank you, Jesus. With some cooperation. Yes, Lord. Yes. A deeper level. Lord, help us. Thank you, Lord. Thank yeah. you for being on time yeah. with your word, God. Yeah. You knew what we needed. That was right on time. On time. Yeah. Timely. God know what we need when we need it. Timely. Thank Hallelujah. you. Thank you, Lord. Ain't that just like God? Yes. Mm. Ain't that just like my God? Yes, yes. Time. Hallelujah. Yeah. My life No hope, no joy, no peace that I find anywhere. Yeah. But then you came along and gave me a new song. And right now, my life is changed since it changed my name. Oh, God. Made a difference. Oh, uh, yes, it is.
Now, unto him who is able to keep us all from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, to him belongs glory, majesty, dominion, and power, henceforth now and even forevermore. And the body of believing saints all together say, Amen. 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 You no, know, I love you. There's nothing you can do about it, so get used to it. Amen. And thank you. I got I got those Amen. emails. If I do not have your email, please reach out to me if you need, if you want, I will make sure that I send you. The, 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 the um, you know, this today's service, uh, I just need to download it. It just takes a few minutes to do that. So, but I'll send it to you as soon as I can. I yes. have a quick question. Um, can, I put, can I play this um, on the computer again so that Marvin can see it? Yes. Because I play it so it's audio, but I'm going to take a laptop and see if yeah. I can put it. You should be able to play it. I should be able to play, play it? Yep. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Because that's where I'm on my way to. Y'all know me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you can play it on the laptop. That's where I watched last week's at. Okay, we'll do. Okay. Okay. I'll play it on the laptop. Okay. Brother Stevens, good to see you. Everybody, it's good to see you. Stay blessed. Mm -hmm. Be wonderful. Love the Lord. Love one another. Have a blessed, wonderful day, Reverend Russell. Thank you. You Thank too. Thank you for another level. Yes. Another level. I, I tell you, I'm just mm -hmm. overwhelmed. But y'all have a blessed, wonderful day, everybody. Jesus loves yeah. you. I love you. Too bad you can't do nothing about it. I love you. Y'all be blessed. Bye. Be well. Take care. God bless everyone. Bye bye. God bless you both. God bless you. Yes, Brian. Thank you guys. Appreciate you. Well, Russ, I enjoy your message. God bless you. May God smile on you.
I Thank love you. you all, and ain't nothing y'all can do about it. <laughs> all right. Thank all you, right. Reverend all Russell, right. for that wonderful sermon. You're Thank welcome. you, God Lagree. You it's about take, take collaboration. It, it was a beautiful service, I tell you. Beautiful yeah. message. Beautiful service. Hey, what's going on, sir? How are you? This is Jahaya. Hey, Jahaya, how are you? Uh, fine, love you. Wow, I'm love you too, cuz. Okay. Hey, baby, talk to you soon. Okay, blessings, everyone. Okay, Stay you safe. Too. Keisha, I got your email address. I'll send it to you. Amen. God bless everyone. Thank Have you. a special God week. bless everyone. Okay, bless. you too. Have a blessed bless. week. Thank you, Reverend Russell. Oh, you're welcome, my brother. Thank you, man, for participating. Thank you guys for, for answering when I call and ask if you would participate. You, you know, you willingly do that, and I really appreciate that. I really do. Uh, so thank you so much. Yes. All right. Have a blessed, have a blessed day and blessed week, everyone. Everyone. Uh, it's hot. A lot of fluids, everyone. They hydrated. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good idea. Okay, we're gone. I'll see you later. Have a good day.